Ian McCormick had traveled for two years chasing adventure around the globe. He wound up on the island of Mauritius, which is known for its great surfing and diving. Ian McCormick loved the ocean. He was an avid diver, but nothing prepared him for what he was about to encounter. As I dived in the water, something smashed into my forearm. Uh, I found like thousands of volts of electricity. My whole arm was swollen, double its normal size. My arm was blistered where the tentacles had hit me, like burn blisters. I could feel the toxin quickly moving up, my blood stream into my lymph glands. I thought to myself, Ian, what on earth have you done in your life to deserve this kind of punishment? Ian was stung by five box jellyfish. One can kill a person in four minutes. And he wasn't ready to die. Ian was young, loved to travel, party, and womanize. He also had been an atheist and didn't know what was waiting for him in the afterlife. With precious time passing by and several failed attempts for help, Ian finally got an ambulance to take him to the hospital. But Ian knew it was probably too late. Well, please welcome to the 700 Club, Ian McCormick. Ian, it's wonderful to have you here. It's great um, to be here, Gordon. Your, your story is one of the most amazing miracles uh, I've, I've ever heard. Um, what, what was your life like before you, you got attacked by the jellyfish? Uh, very much a non-Christian, um, partying, uh, traveling, surfing, nightclubs. So religion was something I thought all people were involved in and, and mother. <laughs> <laughs> your mother was a Christian? My mother was a Christian. She was what you'd call, I think, in the States, Episcopalian or Church of England. Mm -hmm. um, and so I, I'd been brought up as a child in it, but it was, I just thought it was for grandmother and old ladies, not for young people. Not for you? No, so I went looking at Eastern religions and, and um, traveling, and that's what I was doing, surfing around the world. All right, so, so you get in, in your, your diving, you get stung by five box jellyfish yes. not just one but five five and and one's enough to kill you that's right and kill you in in how long the quickest i've had when it's been stung across the throat around the heart is three minutes um wow. many people die within 15 20 minutes some even 10 depends on what part of the body you're stung on and others have lived up i think up to an hour and a half and so when i was hit the fisherman turned white and said, Ian, one of these will kill you. So when you see a black Rastafarian turn white, it's pretty <laughs> troubling, you know. And I could feel the poison moving quickly into my body. Right. And I knew I had very little time. So they got me into the boat and said, urinate on your arm, Ian. You need to get to Katrubon Hospital immediately. Vite mort. Allez, allez. They spoke a French Creole. So I was frightened. So, I mean, I was really frightened. And, and I assume you knew you were dying. Oh, that this the was the poison was, was so it. quickly it was paralyzing right down my right hand side and by the time they got me into the ambulance I was completely paralyzed uh, just my body gone through the death rattles um, it was just frightening w when did you know that you were actually dead because you were well as I was going into into the hospital and the ambulance I saw my life flashing before me and I just saw that happening, and I thought, well, perhaps I won't make it. Is there life after death? And as I'm questioning all these things, my mother appears in a clear vision in front of me, on her knees praying. I didn't realize, but back in New Zealand, my mother was the only Christian, and um, she had just seen God reveal my face to her and said, your eldest son Ian is nearly dead. Mm. And so my mother began to pray. All right, so your mother's alive. Mother's back She's in New Zealand. In New Zealand. Yeah. She gets a visitation? Well, I'd say, say a vision, a clear vision of my face and uh -huh. God audibly speaking to her. And he said, your eldest son, Ian, is nearly dead. Pray for him now. And so she starts praying. Yeah. And God takes. And then you in the ambulance. See her doing you this. You see that. And she's saying, call out to God. No matter how far from God you are, son, um, he will forgive you. But call out from your heart. And I thought, well, I don't believe in God. And it's too late. How could he forgive me? But I knew my mother was a Christian, and I thought, well, maybe there is a God. If there is, show me, show me your face. Um, help me to pray. Suddenly, so the Lord's you, Prayer. You gave, you gave it a shot. <laughs> well, when you, I mean, the Lord's <laughs> Prayer. nothing to lose now. <laughs> nothing to lose. The Lord's Prayer appears in front of me. Uh -huh. Forgive us our sins. And so I ask God to forgive me and forgive others who have sinned against you. And 
And I thought, well, I can do that. And then God showed me two faces of people I had difficulty forgiving. Mm -hmm. And I, was, I, had, I, I chose to forgive them. Give your life to the Lord, thy will yeah, be done. All during your adventure to get to the ambulance to the hospital, you had been abandoned. And, and yeah. <laughs> people didn't want to pick up the dying guy and, right. and do anything for you. And why not actually push me out of his taxi because I had no money. And the other one of the faces was the Indian taxi driver. Uh -huh. And God was asking, would you forgive them? And um, that's not easy. You can say the words, but to do it from your heart, it's not that easy. Um, but Jesus said, if you don't forgive others who have sinned against you, your heavenly Father won't forgive you your sins against him. Wow. So I thank God I forgave them. <laughs> <laughs> the Lord's Prayer too. came. I prayed for my heart. And I, I felt like weeping, but I was so proud. Um, I controlled my emotions. But the peace that came in has mm. never left me in 28 years. What, what, what happened next? Well, I knew I was, I'd given my heart to God and there was a peace had come, but my body was still dying. And they got me into the hospital. I could feel myself coming out of my body. I could hear them talking and um, saying, we can, that's all we can do for you, is they shove an antiserum and neurotoxin into me. And I thought, well, I'll stay awake all night, but I just had no strength. I remember shutting my eyes, thinking, well, I'll gather some more strength. And as it happened, the machine to monitor my heart flatlined, and I was pronounced dead. Next and, minute, and you heard that? Yeah, I, um, and I'm out of my body, alive, looking, and I'm, I'm thinking... You, you heard the heart machine go, uh, the, the flat tones. Yeah, and they're running to my body, and I'm alive out of it. And you hear a doctor say... Well, no, I, no, but you can just tell that the way everyone's, everything's happening that I'm gone. And so I'm next minute out of that hospital in complete darkness. Mm. So I'm grappling, did we have a power cut? You know what I mean? Have the yeah. lights gone out or have I died? So I'm groping around the darkness looking for a light switch. I thought it's so dark in here you can't see your hand in front of your face. So I bring my hand towards my face and my hand goes straight through my face. I said, that's impossible. Two hands, both hands. I go for my chest, nothing. My hands, nothing. And then I have the terrifying realization that I could be alive out of my body. The closest thing I could think of is that I'd met people that had amputations and they could feel the, the limbs leg. there. Phantom pain, it's called, the medical terms. And so I'm going, well, could my physical body be back in that hospital where I apparently have just left? Where am I? And then I could feel evil, the most intense evil. It was mm -hmm. like invisible eyes were looking at me. It was like a spiritual darkness. And I heard men screaming out of the darkness saying, shut up. I thought, I've said nothing. Not realizing my inner thought was a speech and they could hear me going, where am I? Who turned the lights out? Another man, you deserve to be here. I said, deserve to be where? Another man in front of me, you're in hell. I was like, in hell? I don't believe in it. You know what I mean? How supposed to be a party place, and I'm wrestling with this whole concept. Then I have a re realization, well, this could be Hades, this could be hell. The next minute I'm thinking, well, God's every right to send me here, and yet I reflected on the fact that I had prayed in the ambulance. The next minute, radiant light pierces mm. through the darkness and draws me out. So you remembered your prayer, yeah, and you remembered the peace that that prayer brought, and as soon as you remembered it, the light came. Yeah, and Psalm 23, the Lord's my shepherd, I shall, even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, and the Hebrew word is deep darkness, I shall fear no evil. Yeah. So the evil was all around me, but it couldn't touch me. The scriptures say, greater is he within me. Nothing can separate me mm. from God's love, neither life nor death. Now, I didn't know scripture, but after the scripture just came alive to me of what actually happened. Those walking in darkness have seen a great light. Colossians 1.13, he's delivered me from the kingdom of darkness. Now, I'd seen sunlight come through windows as a child and dust go up in it. And I was like a speck of dust going up. Isaiah 9, I think it says, those walking in darkness have seen a great light. So I'm being drawn up, and then I see this tunnel of light. What's that? I'm now drawn into this narrow tunnel. Jesus said, small is the way, narrow is the way. And I move down this tunnel of light, the speed of light, Waves of radiance come up. First wave, comfort. So that's a living emotion. It's a living light. Mm. Another wave, peace. And it floods me. The peace of God goes right through me. Us. I don't know what to do. 
And Jesus said, oh, I'm the Prince of Peace. And I turned my head to see what my body looked like because in the darkness my hand had gone through my face and I could see my arm transparent, a spiritual being of light. God as the Father of light will be sons and daughters of light, transformed by his resurrection power. And I could see through my hand and I thought, what's the end? I moved further down, another wave of light, joy, came out of the tunnel and saw the full radiance and glory of God. It just covered the heavens. As I stood in the presence, he called me by name. He said, Ian, do you wish to return? Hmm. I thought, return? I looked behind me, saw the tunnel dissipating back into darkness. I thought, am I out of my physical body? Am I actually standing here? Or am I comatized? Am I in what's called an NDE with endorphins tripping out of my mind? You know what I mean? Am I, is this happening in my head? Yeah. Or am I actually out of my body? Have, have you ever had people critique your experience on that? that oh, yeah, you have. If we, <laughs> you have so many different people ask you and question, you know, I mean, were you alive, were you dead? Yeah. And I said, well, I was pronounced clinically dead for 15 to 20 minutes. When I came back into my body, I was on a slab. With, you know what I mean? So at the time, I'm... You, you were in the morgue when you came back. Yeah. That's when my body had been moved from the A&E down onto the morgue. So here I am trying to reflect on is this real? I mm -hmm. responded back and said, well, look, if I'm out of my body, I wish to return. He said, Ian, if you return, you must see in a new light. I said, well, are you the true light? His response to me was, Ian, God is light, and in him there is no darkness at all. 1 John 1, 5. I mean, God is light. I could see no so darkness. So God is quoting scripture to you? Yeah, the Lord's in the center of this light, quoting scripture directly to me. God is light. I'm thinking, well, darkness, I've just come from that. And they called it hell. It's just the kingdom of heaven. Is that almighty God? Mm. And I was shaken. I thought, he knows my name. He knows my thought before I even speak. Then he must see all my sins. And I'm not a good man. Yeah. I've done a lot of things wrong. So I pulled back. As I did, waves of light came off his presence, pure love. And I mm. cried like a child as waves of love and acceptance which came into me. I said, well, God, you can't love me, and started telling him my sins. And each sin I told him, more love. Mm -hmm. And I said, God, but I've cursed you. I've slipped around of drugs and more and more of his love. And he showed me that all my sins had been forgiven when I prayed in the ambulance. It says, of course, the blood of Jesus washes away all sin and that he had forgiven me when I prayed for my heart. And then I stood before him with no sin, no darkness. I opened my eyes, and I was full of liquid light, love, encased two to three feet around me in pure light and pure love. But the radiance around the Lord mm. eclipsed. I felt like a glowworm or a firefly. And I saw this cloud and I said, God, if you love me, could I step in and see you face to face? Mm. So I walked into that's this. A bold, that's a bold question. Well, I thought, I'm so close if he loves me so much. So yeah. I walked into this cloud, and as I did, my hand disappeared, and then I put my face in, and I couldn't see my own spiritual body. It had been eclipsed by the radiance. It was like veils of miniature stars. As I moved through these veils, I could feel the light that I'd stepped into, and it was now healing my heart of hearts, my broken heart. And as I got deeper in, I watched the waves of light open. The cloud began to part, and I saw Jesus with his hands outstretched, bare feet, dazzling white robes. It's as though he had taken this cloud and clothed himself in garments of, of this cloud of light. And as I looked towards the face of the Lord, <laughs> the radiance, the source of all the light was coming out of his face. You knew if he spoke, constellations, galaxies would come into existence. So I could see he had the form of man, but the face of God. His hair was radiant white. Now, I had never read a Bible, so I didn't know that John had saw, saw that in Revelations 1, 13 to 18. Mm -hmm. His face shining like the sun and his hair white like wool like snow. But I'm seeing what I know to be the Lord, God Almighty, radiant light pouring forth from his hands. And as I walk towards him, white light pours out of the face of, of Jesus. I feel purity. I feel childlike innocence restored back to me. I come about halfway towards and more light, holiness flows into me. 
And, and as I got right up towards Jesus, I'm trying to see his unveiled face. But I don't know that no man looks upon the face of God and lives. But I am so happy that I am weeping. Mm. I don't know if you, you can be so happy but still Still cry. overcome. And I watched Jesus beginning to move. Oh, why is he doing that? Why won't he permit me to see his face? As the Lord moves with his hand, he steps aside and shows me a continuation of the circular tunnel. Right behind him, I can see a whole new world opening up behind him. It's as though he's been a door of light. He's doorway. And as he's opening this doorway into eternity, I can see fields, grass with the same radiance and glory that's upon him right across the pasture. The flowers, the crystal clear river, trees along both sides, mountains, blue sky, rolling hills. Now, I come from New Zealand, like Lord of the Rings country, and That's I am beautiful. looking at paradise. I'm thinking if you stepped on it, it would spring back. The radiance of the presence that was upon Jesus was across the entire creation. And I thought, I'm home. I, I, I couldn't believe it. I, I was under the assumption that religion taught you go into a cloud, <laughs> play harps and have no. fat little Italian babies no. for it. The newer. No. <laughs> <laughs> but I am looking at a new Lord, earth, yeah. and above it appears to be a new heaven, a parallel universe, really, right in front of me. As I'm standing there, I knew I'm home. I just begin to step forward, and Jesus came right back in front. The door closed as he said, now, Ian, now that you've seen, do you wish to remain here, or do you wish to return? I said, remain here. Mm. I have no desire to go back. Yeah. I said, I've no one to go back for. No one loves me. Um, you love me. And I look back to say goodbye, cruel world, and the Lord showed me my mother. Mm. The one person who had taught who, me and prayed loved and loved me, the one person I loved and honored. I thought, if I pass through into eternity now, will she know that I prayed in that ambulance? Will she have any concept that her prayers Where helped her son to give his heart to the Lord in his dying seconds? Will she have any way she would know this? I thought, she will not. Mm. I thought, how selfish would it be for me to enter eternity, my mother has to bury me, and think for all intents and purposes, she lost her son to hell. I thought it would break her heart. Mm. I said, I have to go back. I said, Lord, I want to go back. He said, Ian, if you return, you must see things in a new light from an eternal heavenly perspective, not a temporary earthly one. I look back again. My father, my brother, my sister, hundreds of thousands of people appeared behind them, a sea of humanity. I said, well, who are they? He said, and I want you to go back and tell them also, because most will not come into a church any longer mm. to hear my name. I said, but God, I don't love them. I don't know these people. I know my family. I love my mother. He said, Ian, I love them. I desire all of them to come to know me. Now, I had difficulty loving one person, let alone humanity. I said, I don't understand that love. How can I go back down a tunnel into darkness and back into my body? He said, son, tilt your head. Feel the liquid drain from your eye. Now open your eye, Ian, and see. As I opened my eye, I was instantly back in my body, lying on a slab in a morgue with an Indian doctor holding my right foot, cupped in his left hand with a scalpel pricking the base of my foot like a dead piece of meat. And as he saw me open my eye, the poor doctor went through the ceiling. Mm. I heard the Lord speak to me. He said, son, I have just given your life back. I said, God, if that's true, can I look out my other eye? As I turned my head to the left in the doorway where nurses had worked on me in the A&E, they saw me tear out and hit them, and they smashed into each other as they ran. The doctor drops my foot and tells me I'll be there for 15 to 20 minutes. I can feel nothing from my neck mm. down. I said, God, if I've seen you, can you please heal me and enable me to walk out of the hospital and live a normal life? The power was like electricity coming from the tip of my head. Death had come in through my feet. Now life was coming in. And within three or four hours, I was totally healed and walked out of the hospital. That day? That, the next day. I the stayed. next day you walked out? Yeah, walked out. And I believe in the resurrection power and the healing power. And I said, God, what's happened to me? He said, you are a reborn Christian. He said, read a Bible. I said, I don't know what a reborn Christian is. Do you have to die and come back to life or something? He said, no, read a Bible, son. I said, I don't have one. He said, your dad has. In six weeks, in 1982, I read the entire Bible. Wow. So. What an incredible experience. Now, if, you, if you have biblical doubts about what Ian just said, I was reading this morning 
where uh, God appeared as a, as a pillar of cloud. And then he called Miriam and Aaron and Moses to him. He was mad at the time with what Miriam was doing. But it says he appeared as a pillar of cloud in front of the tabernacle. And then that he stood in that pillar. And that's exactly what Ian just described, that there was a presence, um, a, a human form presence, who was able to speak and interact with people at the door of the tabernacle. So if uh, I, I love it when people get revelation, but I also love it when that revelation lines up with what is already recorded in the Bible. In Revelations, it says that there was no longer the tabernacle, it was Jesus is the Holy of Holies. So within that veil, we come in to the Holy of Holies, and he is the Holy One. So holiness and purity was transmitted by the Lord directly into my heart. And it says the Holy Spirit glorifies the Son, so the fruit of the Spirit is love and peace and joy. And I was realizing that I was like an outer court standing outside that cloud where the fruit of the Holy Spirit, who glorifies the Son, but when you came in within the veil, the Holy of Holies, stood the Lord. Uh, Ian, praise God for you, and, and praise God for what he's done in well, your thank life. Thank God for a praying mother. <laughs> and the, thank God for a praying mother. I've, I had one, and <laughs> I had a praying father, too, and they turned me around with their <laughs> prayers. That can happen. You know, for you, if you've heard this story and you're wondering, uh, can all this be real, uh, pray Ian's prayer. God, if you're there, if you're real, could you show me? Could you, could you do that for me too? Um, you know, faith is, is a whole lot stronger when you've got this kind of evidence for it. You know, it's the evidence of things not seen. So uh, God wants to give you evidence and just realize the promises for you that if you love him, he will manifest himself to you. That's the promise from the Gospel of John. Ian, God bless you. God bless you. Right. <laughs> we'll be back with more of the 700 Club right after this. Coming up.